Alrighty, what's going on everybody? Dots Gaming here, and today we got more PvP commentary for you guys. I just decided that with the couple, with the, the batch of clips I had between the BGs and the Sierra Del footage, I said, you know what, instead of making a meme montage this time, I'm gonna try to continue to do a bunch of these commentaries, really get a good community uh, feedback on this type of series, see if you guys really, really like it, because if you do, I'm gonna start doing a lot of this with my PvP clips, as opposed to always just making them into more montage meme funny videos or stream highlights. So again, if you guys have been liking these videos, be sure to drop a like on it, you know, because if these start to do really well, I will absolutely do more of these. I actually really love doing these. I find them incredibly fun to do. It also gives me a good look at my past gameplay, and it helps me improve a lot to be able to commentate over my own gameplay and kind of see what areas that I need to work on so that the next time I go and fight somebody, I have to, I'm able to keep those things in mind while I am fighting them. And I hope that you guys have found these very educational. So we actually have some Cyrano clips today instead of Battlegrounds. Uh, we got some 2VXs with one of my friends. And then we had, I think it was a, it was either a 3v4 or a 4v4 at a resource that's going to show some more um, coordinated, like, like, like little group versus group play. Because I think the group we were fighting was also in voice as well. I'm not 100% sure, but I think they were. But anyway, this first clip, I did post this on my Instagram. So if you guys do want to follow me on Instagram, it's Instagram.com slash dots gaming. You can just search me up on the app and you'll find me there. But this was basically me and one of my friends were poking an AD scroll group. And a group of like five or six players ended up peeling off that group. And they wanted the dots gaming very badly. So these guys immediately go on to me off this tree. So I know... They're, they're, they, they're literally ignoring my friend. They're just putting all that pressure on me. So I go into my mist form. I dodge out of the mist form because I like to dodge out of mist form into my heals. But I immediately get leapt, which CCs me, which fucks up my entire healing combo. Now, I know, though, that I don't need to undo here. I think a lot of people might have tried to undid here to reset that damage. But I knew that I, I, I just had a feeling that my coag was going to be enough to be able to heal me up here. And I'd be able to turn on this group with a leap, and that would put us in a really, really good spot. So I go into my block, I coag a bunch of times, and the second one, as you can see, doesn't fucking go off. Zenimax. So, like, I'm smashing coag, and it's just, it, I think it only went off the one time. I, I'm hitting it, and it's just not happening. So I say, you know what, fuck it. We swap bars, these guys are super grouped up. I am so lucky that that Blast Bones did not land until I got my shield, or I might have got killed there. And we go for the big leap, and we stun everybody. We get that Battle Roar to get us back up to only 19%, and we... Look at this fucking one leap we hit here. 12.1k on this guy. And we get all these guys CC'd and we get a big shield. Now, I immediately take advantage of that opportunity. I go into my cauterize, go into my coag. I then apply my degen because I want to make sure to get my mage sorcery running so I can help my friend deal damage. I notice that this guy is their healer, so he becomes my priority target. I start trying to just apply dots to everybody, though. Engulfing, uh, burning embers. I'm going to let my... Because these guys are just completely focused on me. So I'm just going to let my friend walk through these guys while they deal damage to me. Now, we do take that one guy down. The dots... We're able to help him. He was able to get them into execute range. I start applying burning embers to everybody. Fossilize one guy. Just get my big coag back. I'm just going into the lash. This guy is low. We lash him. Now these guys are super grouped up in front of us. So we go for a leap here. We want to get that big leap into the stun, into the lashes. That guy drops, and at this point, it's just two guys left attacking me. So I swapped my back bar, block into my coag. Then I know I can actually start to go into this fight here. We go our embers for the heals into Ellie Drain, into a stun, because I know with the two of us, we're going to take him down quick. So I don't even go for the engulfing global. I just stun him. And at that point, we just take down this last dude, and we're hype. We are hype. So basically, my mindset during this exchange here was just, I need to live. Because I knew that if I, and this is this comes from playing with, with friends too for a while, right? I knew that if I could just survive while these guys pressured me with cauterize, coag, with my block, with my shield from my leap here, and just, I was applying burning embers to everybody so that as those would expire, I'd be healed. If I held on and just did enough pressure to these guys that... And he would be able to walk through them and really start to pr pressure on them, which would have then allow me to turn around and start to go more offensive. And that's precisely what we did and why this fight ended up going in our favor. Now, we do have another 2VX out of resource that is going to show some good tower play. So... We are in the back of a tower here as we have these three guys following us. We notice that one of them is a necromancer. So with a necromancer, you need to be careful of two different things, especially if he's a macro. You want to be careful of 
his Boneyard. That's why every time the Boneyard drops, I, you see me dodge roll out of it. Because if they're a Harmony Necro, they are going to deal huge damage to us with that with that synergy. Also, you want to make sure to get out of the Necro Smashes. That's going to apply major vulnerability to you, and you're going to be taking a lot of damage. So Andy and I decide, you know what? We're taking a lot of heat from these guys. We want to go up to the third floor. Now, when... The reason that towers like this are so good for, for doing what we're doing is because of the amount of line of sight they provide. That is why towers are so good and why you see people who do one, two, three VXing, you see them move around towers like, I, like we're going to see in this video because it allows you to kind of bring people into choke points and allows you to get LOS so that you can basically ulti dump on them. Because our goal here is, as we see, like, there's, there's AoEs here. These guys are all on the second floor. So the goal here for us is pull them up onto three, okay? We get a little bit of LOS, kind of break the pressure a little bit. But when these guys come up onto what we're going to call a two and a half, okay? We're going to be able to just ulti dump right here on these guys and deal huge amounts of pressure. So I come up here, and I have this Templar in here and a, and a Nightblade. So I start trying to deal some damage to them. I go for a leap. Now, it's laggy as fuck, as you can see. So we are not going to be getting very reliable amounts of damage. Now, all these guys ignore my friend and come up to me. So what I do is I drop back down to two. Want to, again, break line of sight with these guys, reset my heals, um, and I kind of need to get back to a point that I'm with my friend here and that me and him can strike together. So... We kind of regroup here, uh, kind of let our, re our our stuff regenerate, let our resources regen. I'm super hungry, so I can't think straight. Uh, we let our resources regen, and we start to reapply our buffs. They see where we are. Again, some guy with Dama House, just an absolute legend, comes into the back here, and we start to apply our buffs. He, We're going to go into our ulti dump here as I... Yes, as these guys are all grouped up, and as you can see, damage is really fucking delayed. Um... Probably should have also engulfing to those guys, but uh, we did not there. I, I was just like, let me just get this ult here so we can get these guys CC'd and, and I can get my shield up. Um, I take a really, really bad fear, so I just go into my block, into my heals, as I waddle my ass up onto the third floor. I then use Mist Form to get around here, and we drop back down on a two again. Kind of separate this group here. Uh, again, we're trying to also separate them apart, so if we can attack the group in more bite-sized pieces, it will allow us to kill people quicker. So I get the Dama House Legend, as well as one random guy back here. I go into a leap into a Power Lash, and this dude just gets absolutely chunked. I noticed that this guy has a bow, so odds are he's probably squishy. So I had these three guys grouped up, and that's why I went into the leap. Instant damage on all three of these guys. As you can see, they're all soaring through the air. This guy gets hit with a nearly 11k non-crit leap, so we just go into the double lash afterwards and take this dude down so we had that heal rolling we we're able to get that guy cc now i noticed that i got the graveyard underneath me i start getting more people dogpiling on me so i say you know what fuck this and we missed form out of there plus i want to go meet back up with annie so we can fight together so have the volatile familiar up here i use him to kind of get my dots and debuffs applied just so i can get you know the healing ticks from those i can get the ellie drain from that uh this guy comes up by himself to try to be a hero so we pop all of our damage on him and this guy just gets absolutely shredded so and he drops the ballista on him which does a fucking shitload of damage and i also tried to fossilize him here as you can saw me go for but he actually hit him with the fear so instead i just went for some lashes and we took him down i went for a leap on that guy there and that was a really really bad play what i should have done is just turned around and left the big group coming up the stairs um should not have left that guy absolute waste of my ult um but I noticed that these guys start to lay down a dick load of AoEs on the top. They especially go into the negate as well. So I try to go back on a two and a half, but get chained up. So I dodge roll again, back on a two and a half, and I go down and miss to form. I want to make it so that all these guys' ultimates were just entirely wasted and that they're getting no benefit out of them. So we try to pull these guys around the back of the tower. This one guy comes by himself trying to be a hero. So we take him down incredibly quickly. Now we have these two guys behind us again. Start taking a lot of pressure. I get a couple ultimates on me, so I reset my heals, go into the mist form. Now we get up here. There's a couple guys just waiting up right here because they know what we're trying to do. Now I go into my leap right here. So I have my armor buffer up. I have a cauterized up. I have major sorcery up. So I turn around. Actually, I actually probably don't have major sorcery up here. I really should have made sure to apply that to somebody before I leapt. So make sure that that's always up. But I see that these guys are all grouped up. I need to heal. I want to shield. I want to CC these guys so we can have some counter pressure. So Annie goes into a great fear, and I leap these guys on that. Um, but unfortunately, because I really wasn't as buffed up as I could have been, um, I didn't have my <sighs> burning spell weave up. I didn't have major sorcery up. They weren't engulfed. I, so the leap just did not hit for that much. So that was definitely a huge misplay on my part. But again, same thing. They start to come up here, apply all those AoEs. So I start to kind of just move around two and a half, just kind of reset my buffs a little bit. 
kind of try to, again, assess the situation, figure out who are the targets, who should I be hitting. I noticed that this guy is a Templar who's casting a lot of healing skills, um, not also necessarily the most tanky person, so I'm like, okay, that's going to be a priority target for us. So again, it's just kind of trying to move down here, trying to get these guys to, to pull away from the group with us, and they do, and I fucking delete this guy. So as you can see, that's why we keep moving from the third onto two and a half years. I'm trying to not only use this for LOS to reset my buffs, but I want to see, can I get one or two guys to follow me down here? And then can I deal some damage on them? And that's precisely what happens. This guy drops down and places down the volcanic rune. And then this guy places his graveyard. So I know I have a couple seconds before the rune goes off. So what I do is I get my engulfing applied. I go into a leap and I hit this guy for nearly... 19k damage between um my dots ticking a light attack weave this guy gets hit and, and the leap this guy gets fucking destroyed and then i also hit his friend for 12k damage so that is why we are playing like this that's why we're constantly moving between the floors we're trying to get people pulled off the group reset our buffs and put them in an advantageous position for ourselves because now as you can see 100 magica 100 stamina 92 health with a huge damage shield on so even though i got stunned on my leap didn't matter. The leap went off. The interaction was really weird. We hit that guy with a fossilize afterwards because he must have been CC immune. And we were able to take those guys down. Now, we have taken down, I think, at this point, about three or four people. Now, uh, the rest of the group is just, like, fractured at this point. They are just running around like chickens without their, he with their heads cut off. So I just catch this one guy by himself. So I'm just going to put some damage into him. And he is going to start running away. But there is absolutely no escape. And we are able to kill him. Now, I think the rest of the group at that point probably fucked off <laughs> and decided to leave. But overall, that was played really, really well. There are a couple key mistakes I'm, I, I made, though. I think that basically made my damage not as much as it could have been. But overall, Annie and I, I think played that really, really well. It was a very fun fight. It would have been way more enjoyable if the game wasn't lagging like a mother during that fight. But overall, I think it did go fairly well. Now, we got one more clip. It was a 4v4v4, and I think I'm playing with Gnarly Nate and Annie, and I think we also had a pug with us, just some, like, random dude. I'm not saying he's a pug, but just, like, a random guy uh, running around with us, so that's why I'm calling this, I think, a 4v4. So, Nate is on a support, and I think Annie is on his Stamplar. So, the first thing to do in a fight like this is you kind of want to evaluate who all of your targets are, okay? So, I we have fought these guys before, and I know that this individual right here is not the tankiest boy in the world he is also a necromancer so he's going to be applying lots of defile major vulnerability uh so he is in my eyes at first a really good target hit i hit him with a leap and a couple of lashes and he goes all the way down to 21 percent, especially after Annie hits him with that dawn breaker and as you can see he drops his alt nate sits in that alt and after I know that that happens, I'm just going to start trying to make sure to peel for him. He drops his banner. So we have the major defile up on these guys. And these guys know about it. So they get out of it. We pinch into this guy here. Again, Nate doing a great job of applying his um, banner to that guy. My food does run out. So I do have to reset my food real quick. So I got it back out of the fight. But we coag and we cauterize to reset our health there. We get our buffs rolling. And again, we're just kind of trying to apply some debuffs to everybody. Kind of trying to, you know, kind of get a new evaluation of who should be our target. We're sticking on this necromancer, though. We're putting a lot of pressure into him. Uh, we're just keeping our buffs and debuffs rolling. We're just putting as much pressure into this guy as we can. If we keep him defensive, it's going to minimize the amount of defile on us. It's going to make it harder for him to deal his damage. Uh, we notice that a Sork steps up into the fight, and this guy is pretty squishy. So because we're not making any headway on the Sork, you go, you know what? We're going to try changing targets. So we tried to go change into this guy, and these guys back into their guards. And as you know, guards are a pain in the balls. They're more... In my opinion, that they are more of a concern than the players that we are fighting. So what we do at this point is we back into the tower. We want to kind of bring them into a choke point, kind of have them play on our turf. Now, I noticed that Nate's taking a lot of damage, so I go into the cauterized spam, try to just heal him up a little bit. These guys come in through that choke, and I go into the leap, into the engulfing flames, try to play some AoE damage. Nate drops the talons, and I go into the synergy, and... We have that one guy that stepped in, so we apply some dots to him, but he's playing a pretty tanky warden build, so we go, you know what, he's probably not going to be a, a priority for us. So again, we see that Necromancer step up into us, he immediately starts taking some pressure, so he backs out and goes, I am not going to stay here. Now, there's the guys upstairs, this guy's down here, we go, you know what, we think we're going to push back out, because they also start to play Siege, true old Mary Dominion tactics. So we go, you know what, we got to push onto the Siege, we can't be taking this meatbag damage. So I see this Sork 
is the guy that's applying the siege. This is the guy, if you notice, he keeps streaking back and forth, just trying to go onto the siege. These guys are creeped up, though, so I do hit them with a leap. I'm making sure to keep my buffs and debuffs rolling on this guy. This guy starts to take a lot of pressure, this warden, so we start to put some damage onto him, but unfortunately, he is able to recover from the Arctic Blast, and he gets his talents down, so we hit that synergy, try to get that free damage in. Now, again, we're just trying to kind of evaluate the situation here. Who should we apply? Who should we be attacking? What should we be doing? We back off and we go, you know what? Fuck it. These guards need to be a priority for us. So we start to go into the guards here and I start to apply as much AoE to the guards as possible. And that's why I leap the guards here. Again, I want to try to wipe them out because we won't have those negates, won't have those CCs. It'll be way easier to take those guys down. And while we do that, Annie does burn the siege. And because this guy tries to save the siege, he does not reset his buffs properly. So we go onto this guy, start putting a lot of pressure into him. His, siege, his shields are down and he drops because of that. So we take advantage of the fact that he tried to save the siege and we are able to take him down. Actually, this fourth guy did not join till late. So it was actually a 3v4 for most of this fight. So now at that point, we notice this guy, this warden is taking a lot of damage. And so we push him and he goes down. Now at that point, it becomes a 4v2. And we notice that between these two guys, obviously, Obviously, the Necromancer is going to be a priority target. This Warden is fairly tanky, so we know between these two guys, I believe that the Necromancer will go down quicker, and he does. And then after that, it is all down to this Warden, and we take him down uh, eventually. That Arctic Blast and his high HP pool definitely make it a uh, not fun uh, time trying to kill this guy. You know, this guy didn't really deal the most damage. Um, he was just kind of there for the, the AoE Major Fracture and, and the big-ass heals on himself, but... As you can see, we we eventually it gets goes into the trees, just hold and block. This is that this is warden healing at its finest. I do give him credit though for staying alive as long as we as he did, because me and Andy do a fucking lot of damage. And uh, especially the other guy around here, I think he was watching my stream at the time. Um, he was dealing damage to him too. Nate was applying tons of debuffs. So big kudos to him though for staying as, uh, alive as long as he did. But hell yeah, brother! That group fight was a good time, man. We again, basically what we tried to do that whole fight was we picked a priority target and we went into that guy and tried to put damage into him. If we didn't make headway on him, we would try to swap targets to somebody who maybe was not properly buffing themselves back up or maybe was taking a lot of damage from our cleave, like what was happening uh, with the Warden at one point. We swapped from him to one of the Wardens, started to attack into him. Then we noticed that the Crow started to take more damage. We went back onto him. And then we noticed when we burnt the Siege that that Sork was trying to save the Siege. So we said, you know what? Let's fucking hit him while he's stuck in the siege, like, saving animation. And we were able to take advantage of that and kill him because of it. And it was, uh, it was just a really good fight, man. Really, really good fight. Really good time. Um... And yeah, that, that's our Serial Dope clip. So we had a 2v5 or 6, a 2vx in a tower, and then I think it was, like, a 3v4, a 4 v and then eventually became a 4, and then as you can see, there's a 5th guy over there. But for the majority of the fight, it was just the 3 of us. Um... But overall, really good clips today, man. If you guys did like this, though, I'd appreciate if you smacked a like on it. Again, if you guys have really been liking this style of commentary and this style of video, I love making these. So I will happily continue to make these with Cyrodiil clips from the Guild PvP, from my small-scale stuff. Um, and if you guys like this, man, I'll, I'll happily keep making these. I, I really enjoy these. Um, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. And, of course, subscribe to keep up to date with the great content here on the Dots Gaming YouTube channel. So thank you all for stopping by today. I very much appreciate it, as always. I'm Dots Gaming, and I'll see y'all in the next one.